everyone, this is Tina with Overall Adventures. Thank you so much for joining me. It's that time again. I just finished another notebook today actually and I'm moving into a new notebook so it's time to talk about it. As always these videos follow the same structure. I talk about the pros and cons of the old notebook, the first impressions of the new notebook, I give you some journaling goals and intentions I have moving forward, and then we do an ink and a tea test. So let's do it. So to start this is my old notebook. This is a Danica 58. I will link her Etsy shop in the description below. It's A5, it's dot grid. It's kind of like an ivory, somewhere between a cream and white page. This was gifted to me by Robin at Talks from the Heart and my goodness was this an incredible gift. Woof. I pretty much only have pros for this notebook. It is beautifully constructed. It is durable. It is constantly lie flat no matter what page you go to you're not struggling here with this with this binding it's always going to lie flat no matter what page you open it to I'm serious um, and yeah it's just beautifully constructed so that it's it's just incredibly durable you're not gonna lose a page here I could go on and on this notebook I did was a uh, hundred and eighty two pages um, for me, but I do always sometimes I skip the front a couple pages. So it was around 180 plus pages. Um, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. But the real, the real je ne sais quoi, the real special part and the real biggest pro of this notebook is the paper. And I cannot stress this enough. If you're a fountain pen person and have not tried this notebook, you, you have to, you have to. It's, so I believe from what I've read on her Etsy shop that Danica, yeah, Danica 58, she gets this paper in from Japan. It is superior. I have tried Rhodia paper. I've tried Clairefontaine paper. I have tried Tomoe River paper. I've tried a lot. I've Midori, Leuchter, and I've tried a, most, I've tried a lot of notebooks, a lot of paper. I think I can say, I'm pretty sure I can say this, that this is the, is my favorite paper I've I've used with the fountain pen. And granted, I'm not going to call myself a fountain pen expert. I am still just in the beginning phases of a fount of fountain pen and ink and all that good stuff. But this is incredible. I I, I really like the paper. I almost feel like it like it's not too toothy. It's not like glossy and like shiny. It's not dull. It's it's somehow just strikes this like beautiful balance and I feel like I don't, I don't quite know fully how to describe this but I almost feel like it makes the ink brighter and like more cheerful on the page and like kind of it almost is like the ink rests on top of it rather than like sinks into the paper if that makes sense so you can really see like the variation in the ink it's it's wonderful. You should try it if you're into fountain pens. And I just want to say thank you to all of you in the comments that encouraged me not to cut this notebook. The best call. I can't, I couldn't imagine if I cut it down to an A6, I would have lost even more paper. I also want to note that I filled this notebook up in seven weeks, which for me for an A5 is, that's pretty short amount of time. And I'm going to 100% credit it to the fact that the, this writing experience was just so, so delightful. Um, in terms of cons, I guess I only have a few and most of them are just like personal preference. One being that like A5 is just not my favorite size anymore. I've spent so much of my life journaling in A5s and they're, while they're wonderful, I just, I'm ready and like enjoy A6 and like a little bit smaller. So size isn't my personal favorite. Um, the color of the cover, like meh, not my personal favorite. Again, though, I could have done something to, to like cover that up, but I didn't. I just stuck it into my documented journey A5 folio and, you know, enjoyed the paper. Um, and then the last con, which is hundred percent my fault and nothing to do with this notebook is, um, I wrote in brown ink. I wrote in sepia ink, which is really a nice way of saying brown. And I'm super grateful to my friend, Brie at Documented Journey. She she knew that I was like working through, like ready to change from the gray. I've been doing gray ink for a long time. She lent me some brown. She wasn't such a big fan of the brown. She was like, you wanna try it? I was like, sure, I'll try it. And then I started in brown and then I felt like I was committed to the brown ink. And then I wrote the whole way in this brown that I really didn't like. 
Um, so that was kind of a con, but then again, like the point, you know, I use this from March 21st to today, May 10th. And you know, this is this time period, at least where I live in the mountains is called mud. It's the mud season. So it is kind of fitting that I use the brown, I suppose, but overall incredible writing experience. Like I will miss this. This was delightful, delightful, which takes me to my new journal. So we'll be moving from the Danica 58 A5 back into an A6. This is a Midori A6 notebook, also from, I believe, Japan. Um, this is, if you saw my Boston vlog, which you should if you haven't seen it yet, linking above, um, I got this uh, stationery shop in Boston. I have used Midori notebooks before. So in terms of like first impressions, I kind of know what I'm in for. I really, what I know I love about them is I love the white cover. It just gives you a lot of opportunity to collage. Um, I love the construction. It's, this is a very durable notebook. Um, the way that it's bound is also lie flat no matter what. It's just, it's beautiful. The only thing there's two things. The only, the only one of things is that going from this paper now, I feel like I'm spoiled. I'm like, nothing is going to be as amazing as this was. I can already tell that it's just not the same fountain pen experience. It's not a bad fountain pen experience. It's just like, I feel like the ink just like sinks into it and it doesn't like shine. It's just like not as, I don't know, gloss glossy, sparkly, I don't know. I just feel like it looks a little dull, The my handwriting with the ink versus like what it looks like in the Dedic 58 notebook. And then the other thing that is slightly, uh, is, is I'd prefer if I would have got been able to get blank. They didn't have blank. They just had grid, which is fine. Like they had grid and lines. Um, but the grid is like very blue and like very, I don't know. It's like pretty prominent. So I'm concerned, I'm slightly concerned that when I write on the grid, um, that it's gonna be a little like busy to read, but we'll see, we'll see how that looks. But other than that, I, you guys will be proud of me. As you can see, I collaged it. And that takes me into my journaling goals or intentions really. I think you, some of you know, I used to collage quite a bit in my notebooks and I, I can't recall where I got this term from. I definitely did not make it up, but this idea of intuitive collage. And I've really been missing um, just some more color and just, I'm, I don't know, just coming out of the winter, like ready for a little bit more just playfulness in my journal. So, but I also know myself. And the reality is, is I'm just, once I start writing, I don't want to stop and like pick up a glue stick or like stick a sticker in. And I know that sounds like, I don't know. I don't know why I am. Is it lazy? I'm not sure. But so that's why for me, intuitive collage is, is amazing because basically what that means is you take a blank notebook that you've never used before and you take out all your journaling supplies and then in one shot collage the entire thing. So basically what I did is I skip like every two pages, three pages, and then I put like a sticker or like a little collage or whatever. And then I work my way through the entire notebook. And this is a huge perk. So if you're a new journaler, brand new journaler, and you have a beautiful notebook, and you're a little intimidated about like, what do I write in this notebook? If you go with intuitive collage and just like fill up, you know, every few pages, the notebook already feels used and broken in and worn. So that's a perk. But my personal favorite is that usually what ends up happening is by the time I get to that page, with that collaged image, like this one says it's a family thing and it has a butterfly. I don't know what that means, but I bet you when I get to this page, whatever's going on in my life that I, or whatever I want to write about, I bet serendipitously, I love that word, it's going to have something connected to this. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's just, it's like a little journaling delight. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Like this is just a random fig. I don't know. Maybe that will, I don't know. Maybe they'll come into my life. Rip the legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle. I don't know what any of this means, but I have so much ephemera and so many cool stickers and things that people have sent me and I just don't use it. So I think this is going to be 
this is gonna be my way of using my kind of my stuff, my stash. What what's my what's my goal here? My goal is really just to enjoy this collage and kind of try to get back into maybe using a little bit more images in my journal, not making any promises. What probably is going to happen is I'm just gonna write and enjoy the pictures along the way and see if I have any happy coincidences. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's let's do a tea test. I think my tea is still a little warm and I'm not gonna lie, I wanna drink this cup and as you, I wanna drink this cup of tea. And as you know, I do not own a, I do not own a watercolor brush anymore, a paintbrush. So I use my hands. Come, come, come to me. Let's do a tea test. Oh, my tea might still be a little hot. I learned my lesson from before. I'm not gonna do the first page, I'm gonna skip a couple pages. Let's take out this. Again, like, this is a notebook where I'm like, does it need watercolor or tea? Nope. Is it gonna be fine with it? Definitely. Um, so, let's see. I actually think it's gonna be really pretty. But do you see what I mean about this grid? Like, it's really blue. See these dots, like, this dot here, and then there's another one here. Like, I don't know. I'm not so sure. But I think this is gonna hold up well. I don't think it's gonna get like crinkly like like Tamoy River paper, but I think it'll be nice. Yeah, and then I've got my Lamy here. And it's loaded with my new beautiful blue-black ink, which I'm so happy about. And I have done a pen test already in the back, so I can show you. Okay, so this is my sepia, which is mud brown. <laughs> this is my sepia. Um, and then as you can see, um, this was when I was, I had that new Kuwaiko in my other video. I was just playing with that. And then it's an interesting, this is a bold nib. And then this is my Lamy, same ink, just also in bold. And like, look how bold looks it looks so different right I don't know it just felt like on this paper the the Kaweco felt like extra fine and my Lamy actually feels bold okay so I just want to compare so this is what the blue looks like here and I'm not sure if this is really gonna work but if I take my lovely lovely like do you see this is the same color this is the same color this blue and this blue but wow does it just sing on this Danica 58 papers. Okay, back. I think that's it. I think that's it. This has been such a this has been such a great experience, and I think this is gonna be a great experience too. So I think I'm in for some more good journaling. So now that I've made this video, I can finally start writing in this. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will take